Hi there. Today we're looking at the lottery ticket hypothesis finding sparse trainable neural networks by Jonathan Frankel and Michael Carbon. So this paper is sort of an empirical paper into what makes neural networks train successfully. And it comes out of the literature of pruning. Uh, so they say neural network pruning techniques, right? They have been around for a while. They can reduce the parameter counts of trained networks by over 90%, decreasing storage requirements and improving computational performance or inference without compromising accuracy, right? Um, so what does this mean? If you have a neural network, let's say you just have three nodes, each layer, you have two layers here. Um, you have a neural network here. If you have a fully connected neural network, every node is going to be connected with every node in the next layer, right? And these are, these connections are your weights, your thetas. And you're going to train them, which means you have a, um, you have a number of steps in this direction. And let's say you have a, you have a test set accuracy right here. So here is steps. You're going to train them. And if you train them, your accuracy will reach a certain point, right? I'm just going to draw the, the end point here. Let's say you reach a 90% test accuracy. So your network generalizes pretty well. That's pretty good. So people have been wondering, uh, this, these networks, they, they require quite a lot of storage you know this is nine connections right here so three times three and this is also nine connections can we make it smaller but still retain the accuracy and this is where pruning comes in so with pruning people would go and after you train them so the first step is train the full network right and then the second step is prune now when pr when you prune you basically select among the weights that you have, uh, that you have trained, you select the best ones in, in some form or another. Um, in this case, people just select the ones with the largest magnitudes, but there are multiple techniques to do this. And this is very related to things like uh, quantization or distillation. Um, so with pruning, you just leave away some of the weights or most of the weights and you hope that you still retain a pretty good accuracy right here, right? Um, sorry, actually, we, we don't need these steps thing. Um, so you leave away weights and you retain a good accuracy. So pruning methods have been deployed successfully to make networks use less space or uh, be faster to evaluate because, of course, with less numbers, uh, you need to do less calculations. So uh, this paper builds on top of this, and it basically says, all right, if, if we do the following, if, if we now take this network that we identified after training, and we, um, we just take this network, and we train it from the beginning, only this sub-network, right? So three is retrain then it will also perform pretty well or even better under one condition right so if you only train this thing it will perform well under one condition and the condition is that you transfer over the initial weights so right the question is can we train just the small network from the beginning so that we don't have to train the big network, right? And the paper identifies that this works if, if your initial weights, theta zero of the small network, are equal to the initial weights of the large network, right? Just so, just the ones where you ported them over. But basically, um, th the short answer is no. Um, and the reason is, if you only want to train this small network, you need to know the good initialization of these of these weights all here. And the good initialization you only know 
um, after you've trained the large network and actually identified which of these connections make sense. So you can't just take a smaller network from the beginning. You have to uh, train the larger one, then you know which weights and which in initializations make sense. So this is the winning lottery ticket hypothesis, basically. It states, and we can read it out in full, the lottery ticket hypothesis is a randomly initialized dense neural network contains a subnetwork that is initialized such that when trained in isolation it can match the test accuracy of the original network after training for at most the same number of iterations right now the important part here is that it contains a subnetwork right that is initialized such that when trained in isolation so two things are important it is important the structure of the network of the subnetwork but it is also important what are the initialization of the connections uh, so the the paper kind of hints at why neural networks work at all and the reason why neural networks work is um, because we've often thought of hey neural networks have so many parameters how can they even generalize the reason is the following if we have a neural network we throw so many parameters at it some of the parameters one subset of the parameters namely the red ones here are going to be initialized in such a way in such a beneficial way that training will perform will make the, the network perform well right so it's initialization plus SGD on that that subnetwork right so it is actually only a very small subnetwork that is responsible for the performance of the neural network but but that subnetwork needs to be initialized at the correct position and by over parameterizing these neural networks so much we actually um, give it combinatorically many subnetworks to choose from uh, where the initialization could be well so so because of this combinatorics um, it means that if we over parameterize by uh, some margin then there's almost guaranteed to be a good subnetwork in there that can then perform well right so i hope this makes sense it is basically it is not a way it is not a magic thing where you now we can we now can train the smaller networks it is it is an explanation of why the over parameterization in neural networks makes sense because by over parameterizing we allow the neural networks to combinator to exploit the combinatorics uh, to find a good well initialized subnetwork that will perform well and the evidence for this is exactly the fact that if we transfer over the subnetwork um, it by itself will reach the same performance or actually exceed the performance but only if we initialize it at the same point as it was initialized in the original network so here is how these these subnetworks are identified we've already hinted at that but here is how the the paper does it right so it says identifying winning tickets first randomly initialize a neural network this is the full neural network right then train the network for j iterations arriving at some parameters right these are the trained parameters prune p percent of the parameters right so of these parameters prune some right and and this is for in order to know which ones you prune you need to have first the trained the full neural network right so this is the the catch here you need to train the full neural network to know which ones you must prune and thereby you create a mask m right and then they say reset the remaining parameters to their value in theta zero actually you don't need to say remaining you can just say reset the parameters to their values in theta zero now this is also important this is the same theta zero as it was at the beginning of the training right so you need to actually set them back to those exact values and thereby you create the winning ticket at uh, this okay actually if you if you just want to 
end up with a trained network, then you then this this uh this remaining thing here is important. But if you then want to retrain, you can only you can set everything back and only train the masked version of the network, right? And they they say this this will identify these winning tickets and it will actually work better if you don't do this in what they call one shot, but if you do this iterative pruning. Uh, that means it repeatedly trains, prunes, and resets the network over n rounds. Each round prunes a p to the 1 over n percent of the weights that survive the previous round. Now, why might that be? It might be, and this is, um, this is I think, a somewhat valid hypothesis that I myself put forth here. Um, it might be that if you prune some of the weights, right? Let's say you prune this one and this one. Um, what you'll do is you'll put the responsibility of these weights onto other weights. So maybe on this one and this one. So as we said, they prune by by looking at which weights are large. So let's say here we have the weights of the layer and these are the magnitudes of the of the weights. Right. So okay. So you would prune, let's say you only want to keep two of those around. So you would prune this one and this one because these are pretty small, right? Here's the magnitude. Um and you would also prune that one, right? If you just do this one shot. And then you would retrain and maybe these weights would end up uh, somewhat different. But if you do this in multiple rounds, right? Let's say you first prune one of them. You only prune the smallest one, right? This one here. And then you retrain and then your weights actually change. Um, and all of the responsibility that this weight carried before is now transferred onto this, right? Uh, so your new your new weights look like this. And you prune another one like this. And again, all the responsibility of this would, in, in my hypothetical example, fall on this one, right? And now if you prune a third one, you would actually uh, prune this one because you realize, ah, this weight here, in absence of these two other weights, is actually important. So you would prune this one as well. Right, so I think that is why this kind of iterative uh, pruning method might work a bit better than the one-shot pruning method that they say here. So they do a lot of empirical investigation, and I just want to highlight uh, very few of them, but uh, so that you you get the the gist. And then the, the paper goes into a lot of detail and a lot of different architectures that you can you know, check out yourself. Um, all right, so here we have a plot. Sorry, that, that deals with percent of weights remaining. So as you go to the right here, the, they drop on more and more weights and they realize this is a log plot. Right. So if the dashed lines here are random pruning, which means you just drop out a, a certain number of weights and then you, you retrain. Right. And um, you can see that the dashed line here, it Im it starts dropping and just becomes worse as you uh, as you have less and less weights remaining, which is exactly what's expected, right? You, you prune the network, you make it smaller, you make it less performant, and the, m the more ma weights you take away, the less performing it is. But interestingly enough, right, if you do this pruning that they suggest and then retrain with the uh, correct initialization, not only do you retain the same level of accuracy for very long, you see here this is 2.9 or 1.2 percent of weights remaining, but you actually go higher, right? So you can see here when you have 16 percent of weights remaining, you uh, there's actually a significant difference between the full network and the prune network, um, and that's only by simply training this winning hypothesis. So this I find very, very fascinating. And um, again, this is not a, a magic bullet that you can do from the beginning, but it does give a clue that if you could um, train, sorry, if you could train these from the beginning, 
uh, then then you might actually end up at a better point. So it does actually give a practical application. Also, you see they train faster. So the blue line here is the full network over the course of training. Sorry, this should be blue. So here is training iterations, and this is test accuracy. So you see the full network does something like this. Now, if you prune to what 20% of the weights, actually train faster, and you go higher, and even if you have seven percent of the weights you go almost as high so this is very interesting only when you go to like 1.9 percent of the weights does your performance degrade again and eventually actually go lower than the original uh network so that that is pretty 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 cool um i think now they do as i said they do a lot of investigation and i think one of the one of the main takeaways is that is is not only the structure of the winning hypothesis. So it's not only the structure of the subnetwork uh, that makes it um, to be a winning hypothesis. It is actually the initialization. And here I want to show one of these plots. They have lots of plots, <laughs> but <laughs> you can see here, um, for example. Sorry, this is from my own annotations. Um, again, this is percent of weights remaining, and this is test accuracy uh, at the final iteration. And if we initialize the subnetwork at its original position, like this method suggests, you see we first increase the accuracy and then decrease it after a long time. If we take the same subnetwork, right, but we randomly reinitialize it, then it drops much faster and actually immediately drops so it really is about um, not only the structure of the subnetwork but about its initialization i think that is that is the core of the hypothesis here a very um, interesting related finding uh, that i just want to mention i find to be that they actually discover that the weights so if you have a weight of the so if you have two kinds of weights, let's actually go up to my original drawing here. Um, if you have, if you compare how fast or how far do the weights travel in optimization space, right? So you can you can basically look at how far weights travel during optimization. So you take the full neural network here, and you look at a parameter that ends up being in the winning hypothesis theta. Uh, theta zero and it goes to theta end which let's say theta final and you also look at parameters that don't end up in the winning hypothesis let's call these theta one two theta also final prime uh, i'm not too good at labeling <laughs> and you look at how far they travel you'll find that the weights that end up in the winning hypothesis they during optimization they travel much further in optimization space than weights that are not in the winning hypothesis, right? They just stay around much more. So it's not that the, the kind of uh, good network is already contained in initialization. It's much more than, than the good network lends itself um, very favorably to be initialized by SGD, right? Because it, it travels farther. Um, it means SGG has a bigger bigger pull on it, right? Um, so I think there is a lot of things that are yet to be explored in this space, and I think this paper is a very cool uh, contribution to our understanding of how neural networks work. All right, I invite you to check out all the experiments. They do a very thorough job, and with that, I say bye-bye.